Blue Boy character, which I hated that name, but uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I can still be the meanie, right? Sabu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sabu. <laughs> <laughs> I shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's wrestling Dreamer. Uh, hey, who hasn't shit their pants <laughs> in the ring? Uh, guilty. <laughs> uh, uh, he said he was a, like a dear old friend. Um, it's it's something that many have tried to duplicate and uh, replicate, uh, but there's no way anybody can ever duplicate. One Night Stand was like the ultimate love letter to the ECW fan. Yep. You know, um, yeah, because fuck me. He said, I'll be shouldn't have fucking died in Arkansas. Exactly. Pop or, yeah. Pine but, Bluff. Uh, Pine Bluff. I mean, they ran the ECW Arena a couple weeks before. Yeah. I'm glad to say I was the first official promoter to bring CM Punk and Cole Cabana to Philadelphia. He said, I'll be close. It was just CZW. And I was like, you know, maybe there's room to, you know, for another company. And then uh, we start running the first show, and then. Uh, I, I'm reading the, you know, uh, I don't know if it was one, it was one wrestling.com or I don't know if they switched over to PW Insider, but, uh, then I read, you know, uh, RF video starting a wrestling company in Philly. I went, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I had no idea you guys were starting a wrestling company and, uh, I went, fuck. <laughs> and, uh, then the bogus Philly Wrestling War start. I liked being the guy who got along with everybody. Where it, it, it became apparently clear to me that I wasn't Jasmine's boyfriend. I was more of a career option. It became apparent that, you know, 3PW was a hobby. It was uh, something to put on her resume. 3PW was... Something for her to brag about, you know. I mean, uh, if you didn't know about Jasmine St. Clair, she, she would be more than one to tell you about her. So she's supposed to be in New York at her mom's. Right. I'm looking at her MySpace page, and this guy from Seattle is saying, it's cute that you're in the other room, and I'm leaving you these messages. So she was in New York. She was in fucking Seattle banging this new dude. So... uh I, I sent him a message like, "Hey, dude, uh, just so you know, that's 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 my girlfriend." He goes, "No, she said you're you were her bodyguard." You know, there's a couple three PW shows where she fucking no show, and I, you know, I was fucking left high and dry. So you, you basically fucking almost fucking kill my career. Uh, you almost ruined my fucking life personally. Uh, you go on the internet and you fucking say, "I beat you." You said. I was gay. You said we weren't in a, in a relationship, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. You know, when she left me, it, I mean, 3PW, I mean, I I wasn't making money, you know, on the shows, but I was making money, you know, doing work for her. Like, I would do graphics for her website. I would design 8x10s for her and all this shit. And I was, that was my fucking way of, you know, keeping the roof over my fucking head. She was... She was fucking, you know, hugging Stevie and hugging Shane Holmes. And she went over to hug Matt Hardy. And Reby Sky was there. Right. And Reby Sky was across the room. And fucking Reby Sky went. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking came over and was like, get the fuck away from my man. I called Todd and I. Todd, I just got a fucking email. I just got a text from Jasmine. She says she's in jail. Uh, that she's not going to be there tonight because she got arrested for making fucking phony, call, phony phone calls. And Todd said, I've had it. That's it. I'm done. I had to stand there in front of this locker room full of fucking grizzled veterans and young guys and say, uh, sorry guys, uh, you might not be getting paid tonight. This is my career. Right. This is my fucking career. This is why I sacrificed... I sacrificed seeing my grandfather before he died. And I was away while my grandmother was dying. I sacrificed that for this fucking business. And you're treating it as a fucking joke. Because you want to be play promoter. And you want you, know, you want to be God. You want to... 
oh, I'm I'm the American Mrs. Baba, because, you know, Baba died. And then they said Mrs. Baba was going to take over the company, and she read that, so that became her bullet point for every fucking promote, you know, interview. So this was, you're fucking with people's livelihoods. And you're fucking with people's money. Well, I, I, I wasn't in the WWE, ECW died, I should have went to WCW, I ran fucking 3PW, the fucking chick I was with went off and fucked and married some fucking rock guitar player, and then, you know, the JBL thing fucking happens, I'm fucking depressed about that. It's, uh, I went, uh, 04, 05 was a fucking heavy year that most people would, just went down to their basement, throw a fucking rope over the fucking plank and hung themselves. Especially with that Chad Austin match, Jesus awesome. Christ. Huh. Meanie? Me and Mustafa, are you working you and this boy, Chad Austin? Stay with Mustafa. I was like, if you come near me, I'm going to hit you. I don't want to hit you. Stay with Mustafa. I was like, huh. come here, Mustafa. Me and Mustafa are doing three Stooges spots, and there's a fucking homicide going on around the ring. So, uh, and that trip was awkward going up because I'm in the, like, at the Hardcore Homecoming show, like I said, I went up to Danny Doring. I went to Shake Sands, like, don't fucking look at me. All right. So I went to go say hi to Francine. She's like, don't even talk to me. <laughs> right. And I was like, all right. And so I'm, get, I'm getting it, you know. And, uh, I mean, they're sitting right next to each other. I'm just getting shut down. But I went, fuck. You know, me and uh, Gilbert worked the acolytes. And even before the match, fucking Ed Ferrar comes up and goes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you have to work them. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, I don't know what I'm walking into, but... He's he's making me even more fucking worried, you know, apologizing for it. It was he's like, I'm sorry that, that we, you're working them. It's you were just the last two guys we, we deny. Then they booked you with the acolytes. I was like, okay. And then I fucking feel the hammer come down the back of my fucking head. Not only was it on the back of my head, but it was where I had eight staples put in from the hardcore homecoming show. So my first reaction, I grabbed my fucking head and I spin around. And then, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, it's been around, it's, it's Bradshaw, it's JBL. And he fucking punched me. I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, I'm not going to fucking just stand here and right. take it. And uh, he does the whole fucking hockey jersey thing where he puts my fucking shirt over my face. And <laughs> you talked about me on the internet. Was Vince still there at this point? Yeah, but uh, somebody got, Johnny and another person got in between us. Johnny A sees me. Hey. Yeah, tonight you're working Bradshaw. <laughs> Dreamer's like, yeah, meanie, this has nothing to do Bradshaw. First thing out of fucking, out of fucking Johnny's mouth. Yeah, you're working Bradshaw tonight. Fuck. <laughs> and the uh, Triple H comes up to me and goes, you seem a little nervous. Oh, like, well, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm working with fucking Bradshaw tonight. And I was told, told coming out here, I wasn't. You know, we already see what he did to me. He's like, and Triple H goes, well, if he does it again, he'll be fired. You got my word. I was like, uh, Bradshaw JBL comes up to me and goes, uh, want to have a talk? I said, sure. And um, First time you never tried contacting you at all after that? No. Okay. This is the first words we had spoken okay. since he yelled at me in, in right. the real position that I had talked about on the internet. And uh, I went, sure. And... Uh, we walk off to find a place to talk, but like from where we were to where we were, it's like it seemed like we were walking on forever. I was like looking behind me, uh, and, and I was like, and I was like yeah. <laughs> the further we went, the less wrestling stuff. You know, you, you, when you walk into a WWE backstage area, you see signs. You know, yeah, kayfabe this way, gorilla position away, catering, Vince's office, blah 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 right, blah right. blah. It's like a cartoon. We you know Albuquerque this way, blah, 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 yeah. all these different signs, San Francisco. And we're walking, you know, and shit's fucking disappearing. I'm just like, dude, if I go into this room and there's plastic on the floor, I'm running. <laughs> I'm not getting whacked like Joe Pesci and Goodfellas.